The Creatives with AI podcast. The spiritual home of creatives curious about AI and its role in their future. Hi, everyone. Uh, Welcome to Creatives with AI podcast. I'm your new host. Uh, It's my maiden voyage. I'm Lena Robinson, and uh, I'm really excited to get going, having taken over from David, who's been an awesome host until now. Um, And I'm very excited to welcome another fellow Kiwi, which is a New Zealander, for those of you that don't know, uh, today, uh, Anna Cowie. Welcome, Anna. Hi. Thanks, Lena. I'm excited to be here too. Me too. It's going to be, I mean, you and I have known each other for quite a few years now. We didn't meet in New Zealand. We met here in London, um, but we've collaborated, working on uh, similar clients. We've worked in similar agencies together. Uh, and things like that and you and I can talk the hind leg off a donkey so it's going to be an interesting chat today (laughs) but the first thing I would like to do for everybody is just get you to introduce yourself and tell me a little bit about yourself and a little bit of background yeah yeah well hi everyone I'm um as Lena said uh, we we met in London and um we met through a New Zealand network which I shied away from um for, for most of the time I'd lived here I've lived here for 20 years and um, I don't know why I did, because when I finally kind of got around to the New Zealand networks, it was the best thing. Um, but Lena and I clicked because we'd both had a similar career trajectory um, in the in the commercial world of, of art and advertising. And we'd crossed over at a lot of agencies. So we kind of understood each other. I was um, I was in the creative department. And I remember that there being another department, which Lena was in. Which we feared this um, this department because um, they were the holy grail of the de- of the whole agency. They kind of they spoke the last word on what was what a client would see and what and you were, you would often you know be swearing about them. But um, <laughs> but but let, so Lena and I have a real respect for each other because of that. There's an understanding of where we've been and um, and and then Lena's become a a real um, I guess a career confident for me to kind of nurture me through um leadership and and the changes in my business and things like that so and recently I've kind of navigated back into um I never really let it go but back into fine art after a career of commercial art I always did projects within commercial things um but it was yeah it was interesting to be to um, be able to kind of pick that back up with Lena so yeah, and I think what's really interesting is, um, and I do want to, we'll probably delve into this a little bit more, uh, you've you've moved in as a creative director within the ad agency and marketing creative world uh, as a designer, but you did your degree in uh, your, your um, probably not the right word, you did your uh, education as a, as in fine art, didn't you, back in New Zealand? Yeah, I was, I, I was, um, I'd, I'd always been in art, so my, but I, I never really, I never really had design. I, I, I think back when I did it, I didn't really know what a career in design meant. It was kind of there was always um, a career in advertising, the kind of uh, the, the history of the ad man and and that kind of thing. Um, and at fine art school, I went to Elam Fine art school which is one of the top art schools actually in the world um i read recently so that that set me off on a trajectory of uh, having a real creative um force behind my say design techie side of what i did it was more about it was more ideas driven in fact if you came out of a fine art degree at elam and you were still sane that was an accomplishment so <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> They pushed the limits of your brain. I now blame Elam for how, how outrageous my thinking is, I think. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you and I have talked about squiggly brains, haven't we, uh, yeah. when it comes to that. And you grew up in um, quite an interesting environment in New Zealand as well, didn't you? Yeah, I I, I, grew, I grew up in, um, well, I lived all up, I, I was born in um, the northernest tip of Kaita, uh, in Kaitaia, so 90 mile beach and I had that kind of lifestyle so I um and then I and then I moved my my parents kind of moved down um eventually living in Auckland and then um 
I did work for an art gallery in Auckland, which was um, amazing. Yeah. So cool. it was a t it was one of the top art galleries, um, but at the time they were the only one dealing internationally. So that was a really interesting perspective. Um, and I did that for four or five years while I was at art school at the Gal Langsford Gallery. So that set me up to have the understanding of the art world. Um, and then doing a design degree at Ingham, I specified in, in um, the design department, set me up for more um, the commercial world. Yeah. I think that leads us into a really interesting conversation because uh, with the ga gallery that I own separately um, for the consultancy I was running, uh, you you will be coming on shortly onto the into our gallery. But what was I always found really interesting about your work is you've decided and never been afraid to go down the um, digital artist route. So tell me a little bit more about what you're doing, because I think what that will do is it will lead us into um, the interesting conversation we want to have about around AI and the impact that that's having on you. So tell me a little bit about why you chose to go down the digital art route. Yeah, well, well I think when I was at Elam, because I was in the design department, then I I learned computers. And I always, when I started in, a, uh, in my um, career in the, commercial world I kind of shied away from being saying that I could use a computer because you just got you got kind of lumped as this person that wasn't creative uh, mm -hmm. if you could use a computer you became part of the tech department um the processing of of the whole system in a in an ad agency kind of the, there's the there's the kind of doers there's the thinkers and so I although because I'd used a computer my father actually worked for Apple at one stage as well as having a a, um, career in um, sports which was that kind of got me traveling internationally when I was younger with him and things like that um, so I, I had an experience of a bigger broader um, outlook on what 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 could be possible with an art degree and an art degree that was in the design um, section because you kind of could use the tech but we were definitely taught as creatives we weren't taught as um, techie designers we, we weren't really tech taught the tech as such we were taught more the creative thinking behind your ideas it just so happened that the design department was the tool that you were working within um so that kind of put me on that trajectory to use I, I always said I used a computer like a pencil so I kind of I never saw the difference between the computer and a, an oil box or, or boxes of oil or paints or, or charcoals I would I would kind of use my mouse like a pencil and do drawing on the computer um, and back then it was just drawing with a mouse so it's really only been recently that I've picked up a an iPad with an iPen we th there was kind of tablets and things that came out but that me getting an iPen just completely changed my way of working speeding things up um, I had to learn and adjust to not let the tech take over my style. So um, it, that can happen and you can have a different style of pen marking and hand marking because of the tech. But I managed to kind of, I guess, um, contain that into keeping my um, hand style. So whether I'm using a pencil or a digital um, pen, my hand marks the same. Yeah, it's quite interesting that, isn't it, when you're talking about... Um styles and so forth because I know that that comes up so that's going to lead me I think into the question that I really want to kick off with regards to the AI side of your creativity is how is AI currently impacting uh, your artistic work like are you using it in your artwork are you using it in your commercial side of things like tell, tell me more about AI yeah. and its impact on you as an artist yeah. and creative. Um, I I am using it, and what I've what I've what I have been doing is I've I've, I've set up a, a studio, Kurt Lewis Studios, and the idea is to to do art and design, and collaborate. I do a lot of collaborations. So where I've found I've been using it is less so in my own work, my own artwork. Um, although I have been using it, the the tools of um, of of t of tech of of type and. Um, and chat GPT as a, a tool within AI. But as far as the 
art side of it does i've been i've been collaborating with artists where i see the ai as another collaborator in that process um which i would then as my kind of art direction i over the pieces that we create together um then that that synergy comes together where the ai is not dictating or not taking over the artwork but adding to it in a way that it it moves it on um and moves my it kind of pushes me harder and in, in in kind of and and it, and, it, and I'm not restrained from the the technical side of where I may have been in the past where things might have taken longer um I can move the, through things a lot quicker so I've been using I've I'm not I've, I'm I'm one of those people that are pro um AI and where it's going and I've kind of just jumped on board and said well you just got to embrace it because it's it is another tool that it's in our kind of um box to use and it doesn't take away the creativity it doesn't it adds to the imagination um maybe moves you on through ideas that you wouldn't have got to you would have got to eventually um but with those little pushes you can kind of guide it you you have to guide it as well so you know you have to have you have to have with it i feel you have to have um that creative critical eye to be able to judge whether something's good or bad there's still those decision makings that i'm i'm as the creative is having to make um and i wouldn't say that ai is going to take over human creativity it will definitely add to it um but i don't think it will take over yeah i think it's really interesting like uh, the ai as a collaborator i think that's the first time i've heard somebody actually use that phrase would you see it Oh, this is going to be a weird question. I'm throwing this out of left field. Um, yeah. AI as a muse. Y- yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. I can understand what you're saying about that. Like, a, um, yeah, it's, it's the, the, it's the, well, I wonder whether, you know, as a muse, it's the model that's in the room that might have inspired something that another model wouldn't. Like, you might have two, two, two kind of, I, I've often seen this when you're doing live drawing. You have two two models in the room. One will inspire you to kind of feel something deeper, and the other might just not have an energy to it. And I've definitely seen that with AI. Like I've I've used it on many occasions where I've just used it for fun, um, just to explore. And I've I've put in prompts and come back with things that's just like well, that's crazy, you know. Like it's just it just didn't it didn't make sense or give any any nourishment to me at all and then I've had certain imagery that I'm using in a collaboration I've got one um collaboration that I've just done that hasn't been launched yet but it's um a new collaboration and that collaboration just blew me away it was the nature of the artwork the nature of my input to what I wanted to achieve with it um I knew what I wanted to achieve but the AI gave me just so much more expanded um kind of techie stuff that I that would have taken me ages to do um and also I found when I when I was using it for um a, more of a marketing side of things I did, I did and just fun I, I used the um prompt of, of creating avatars and that I was blown away uh, because I know the timing it takes to to retouch something to kind of even just to remove a little wrinkle on your eye it, it, in Photoshop, it, it used to take us ages to do these like images that you might retouch, um, some shine off 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 someone or or do something like that. And and now it produced kind of a hundred avatars that were just the most amazing um, digital reproduced images of myself that I could, I I could never. I mean, I could have come up with the imagination of those of those characters it mm. would have taken a lot of time a lot of research a lot of um you know you would have had to kind of do mood board in the past you would have done about 10 mood boards of styles of people or imagery or you know to, to become a, a um viking i would have searched vikings and i would have looked at the styles and i would have done some retouching done some drawing then put it together but it did it within a second you know within a second yeah. I, I had me as a viking so it was yeah it was kind of mind-blowing I think what's really interesting, and I cannot remember who I was talking to. It might have been Dave I was talking to about this the other day to somebody. 
And I think what's really interesting is that the, and I've, I've got, this is a personal view, which I shouldn't really put onto it, but, you know, I, I agree with you on the, I've always looked at AI as just a tool. The, the question I wanted to ask you was around um, when, uh, you know, what the outcome ends up being is is about the quality of the person driving the tool. And if you're starting as an artist, do you think that the output's always going to be more, well, I don't want to say superior, that's not the right word, but more stylistic in your way of doing it and more towards a fine art as opposed to somebody that isn't an, a creative person at all and just puts in one thing and, you know, because a lot of people ask, or I've got to rephrase the question, a lot of people ask yeah. about uh, AI, like anybody can do it. And I'm like, technically, yes, but do you yeah. do you think that if you are a true artist anyway, that what's going to come out the other end is always going to be superior? Yes and no as a way of answering to that. I okay. I think I think there's become an an AI style of art um that we're all seeing. Um like the the gimmicks of the of like the, the cats that are washing dishes and you know and how amazing they look because they look so real. Um that's a kind of style of art that we're becoming used to. That's a it's almost like a genre of of art that is being produced in an AI sense but I think I think the art world is always going to be really discerning about what is real creative art so there might be yeah someone who produces one of those cats and they it, it might be a bit kind of like I don't know the kitsch style like they kind of like yeah we've all seen that before and we just start yeah we've all seen it before we've all seen it before but an artist I think will have that element of uh surprise like surprise or something that is just enriched in a way that's like um and, and only an artist can do that so everyone can do some AI cats and some you know like and the kind of art that we're seeing like the fairies and the gardens and the you know people as avatars and things like that but to kind of give it that, I, I've seen it being used um, in a commercial sense, like in um, in advertising and in in the big supermarket brands. Well, there's always a sense and a style of art within that world that is dictated to by. I, I just this I call it, call it this kind of advertising just has this flat level pedestrian style of creativity within it that that you were always, as an artist myself, I was always kind of squashed into to kind of refine your your avant-garde art styles because they were just too much for the general public. So you ended up with these kind of fanciful layouts with, I don't know, pretty flowers. I, I mean, I don't, I've got nothing against flowers, but it's the, there's this kind of um, thing that, that you're just forced to do. And I think, so there's this, so as a tool, AI will just do the same thing. It's not going to change th those those um sensitivities and the the art world will just become more and more um like re like refined in its in its in its looking for what is really you know good art what is defined as good art yeah so an artist is an artist is an artist <laughs> kind of <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh that's cool so um with regards to other things that it's impacting i know you and i have talked about um you know how it's maybe and I think you've kind of alluded to this in the conversation as well is you know are there specific in the commercial side of your business are there specific tasks that you think that it's kind of starting to take care of or creative areas that you find it sort of the most useful yeah uh I would say that, that, that for me being an artist um and running my own business as well I think what's held me back in the past is is my creative brain so I don't live in that kind of at the you know I try to but the world that everyone else lives in which seems to kind of like to have their all, all their kind of um t you know the t's crossed and the i's dots and 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 everyone will pick you up because you've spelt one word wrong or or misdone something you know and that, and you'll have this most amazing creative concept that will just be 
kind of disregarded because you've spelt something wrong. And it's what it's because the non-creatives just start having to have something they can judge. So in that sense, getting back to the AI side of it, is I had, you know, using AI, um, the you know, the tool of a chat GPT or there's another um platform that I use, it's a, a smaller little platform that I find more creative in its way it writes. Um then What's that? that one I I think that's where it helps because it can speed up that those two those two brains and those two processes. So um yes it gets used in art in a creative way, but it can also be used in the marketing of art, the um the, the structuring of programming and um and putting things together. So yeah, I would say, I would say there is definitely a, a usage there that uh, that's kind of helped me in a big way. Um and not so much Yes, in the in, in in I don't say I wouldn't say it's changed my creativity. It hasn't changed the trajectory of the work that I've been doing in the sense that it's not going to change who I am as an emotional style that I bring out in my art. Yeah, it it's might kind of, like a collaborative partner add something to it um, that I can then run with and move on, move something on further than I would have been able to in the past. Um, do you, Do you think that it um because I know you and I have talked about this prior that the sort of data running of a business a bit that you know like like most artists that's not the enjoyable bit for you um do you think that it's it's taking care of the bits you don't really enjoy doing so that you can concentrate more on the artistic creative bit that you do yeah definitely definitely so so that I mean that just is is, is sped up like a, th- a thousand times even just writing an email to someone as a as a cover letter to say oh here's a proposal that I'm putting together I mean that would take me it'd take me three days to write that intro letter whereas to do the actual creative proposal I can come up with a million ideas myself as a creative mm. um to, to, to what I would like to propose but actually to put that into a kind of words to explain to someone what I'm thinking um would have taken a lot longer uh, so so in that sense, it does become that creative partner that's kind of like an intelligent creative partner to work with, yeah. I like that, intelligent creative partner. That's cool. So I have a, yeah. a, another question that I'd really like to ask you about. It's kind of more about looking ahead. So how do you envision AI uh, shaping the world of art over the next three to five years? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, I I think we've only touched the surface of what's about to come. I think there's, you know, there's murmurs of, of AI too, um, in the, in the, you know, in the, just in conversations and in podcasts and things like that that I've heard or in adverts and on AI and, um, and, and I think we, we, we don't even know what, I mean, I've got a nine year old and I, I kind of see his future because he's growing up with this stuff so he's growing up in in the metaverse and in gaming which you know some people would say oh don't let your child play too many games but that's their future there's going to be there's there's going to be worlds and jobs and career paths that that we don't even know what they mm-hmm. what they are but they're in that you know they're in that world so to kind of say to not let a child learn those things now is short sighted because it's moving and it's moving so fast. So it's like jump on the bus or the, the train now, or you've you, you literally have missed the the world turning, spinning around kind of thing. But I personally, I view it as an enhancer. So as someone that, um, yeah, it's an enhance. It will be an enhancer to what we are doing already, and a collaborator. Um, I see it as a collaborator in creative um, endeavors, and. And and just that catalyst for it's a, it can be a catalyst for new ideas. So it's going to speed those things up. So it, even in that sense, it's going to speed up um, progress on a on a world scale. Then the, the world's going to be faster than we you know we ever had imagined before. It's like it's like I mean they you know people talk about it. It's like the new um, when when the light bulbs were invented or when the camera was invented. There was you know there was. It was, you know, kind of, especially in the art world. I mean, I, I, I still believe 
that trying to there'll be the artists that that paint their apple this is my definition of it there'll be the artists that paint their apple and they try and paint that apple perfectly so it looks like a photograph of an apple i don't believe that's art i believe that's good technical stuff to get an apple painted perfectly and ai can do that but what ai is going to do is push the boundaries of the creative brain and our limits of what we what we are now kind of forced into as a society of of what is creativity and i think ai is going to push and shake that up so that's my hope for it that it will um it'll it'll this there will still be the um the kind of you know perfect artists and painters and perfect ai art that will be produced but then there'll be another element that will come through to kind of push us in yeah in our new new ideas and creativity so I think that's really interesting. Um, the thing that's jumped out at me of what you just said there is uh, talking about your son and his future. Uh, you know as well as I do that I've got a massive, he, he is a very artistic, a talented artist in his own right, even as a nine-year-old, as the way his mind works, the way he, he creates art. And I know that you've been collaborating with him on some of the pieces that I just think are yeah extraordinary that you and I haven't even revealed to the world yet uh, we'll let you all know when we're going to do that um but I think what's interesting about that with the future a the speed I agree with you 100% that is going so fast that if we don't get on board now it's just gonna be just people are gonna get left behind but there are going to be roles and there are going to be things that we don't even know exist at the moment the future for him when he's all he, he will automatically start thinking um with the use of ai it will just be automatic you know like you and i grew up in a world where the internet did not exist where we are that yeah people um and i think because of that the way that they will think it won't even be a thought it's just like you said it's just a tool it's just a thing um i think uh i think what's interesting about it is that you and I do, did grow up in a world where we've stepped in both camps. We know the world of analog and we know the world of digital and internet. Um, with what's happening uh, now, what, how do you anticipate continuing to adjust to the changes that are happening? Because they are fast. Is there anything yeah, you're sort yeah. of doing in order to adjust to that? Sorry, what was that? Is there anything you're doing to adjust to what is the speed at which things are happening with AI? Um, yeah. I think I think I think that I, how how I'm adjusting is is being open to it. So so I've kind of um I, I you know fortunately have a few connections and people that are working with AI in their businesses and and so on a practical level that you know letting me hear insights into into you know what what is possible and what has been done with it. So how I've, I think my adjustment is just to kind of make sure that I don't put any limits on what I think is right or wrong within using AI. I was working on a a book actually with a collaboration with someone doing some writing and I said, well, we'll definitely, I'll be using AI as a partner. And they they were saying, well, you can't do that. And I said, well, why not? If I, you know, if I'm, if I'm, if I'm clear and honest I wouldn't even say honest I mean I have to because honest that's it it's a word that it shouldn't even come into the discussion about being say honest that they were part of it it's kind of going you don't even need to say it's an honesty it's like it's a given that AI was a collaborator on this project and everyone will be able to see whether there's more in nourishment and enrichment from human creativity to, to kind of it's like a cake that's you know if if it's not baked properly like with care it's just flat so you got to have you got to have some kind of nuance that um that drives that creativity i think it within the machine you know within the machine um and and you're seeing the artists that are doing it that are uh, like you can watch demos of artists that are using it and it's still taking even that, even now taking them hours to kind of work the machine you know work in in, in prompt words and and adapt and then and then look at something review it's like a sculpture you you know pile on a piece of clay lump it on there and it it might stick out to the side of a face and it's like you've still got to sculpt that kind of into a into a shape that looks like a human um 
AI is kind of sim you know, I see it as being similar. You have to have those it can it can add to a to a piece of work. Like I've used it in a sense where I've had a piece of work that I needed to extend a bit longer and it it did use some of the elements from the original art and it extended it out to the side. But I still needed to go in and I would say fix some bits or add some kind of bits to kind of have this natural flow of those two pieces feeling seamless. But it did add another element to the artwork that I was surprised by that gave me another idea that I then continued with with another part of the piece. So um so in that sense I do see it as a collaborator, like without without the two inputs. Um so just being on board, I guess being on board is the thing that you have to kind of like for me it's like just make sure you're on board. Like don't you know? It sounds to me like the biggest adjustment for you is making sure you've got the open mindset. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, right. definitely. I think a lot of people, and I, are, and I yeah. still don't think I've got enough of it. You know, like I still don't think I don't. I I still don't think I've delved deep enough. I've, you know, gone. I I did with um with the whole um. I know you, I know your thoughts on this, but I did with NFTs, and I did go deep. I dived deep. So ask me anything. I'm I'm an absolute expert <laughs> and knowledge in them, and I totally I'm I'm to I understand everything about them and where they go like, again i think there were there's a genre of art which could be called nft art but it's not what nfts are about so when you know about like a, a, a you know and and i did think they gets they did get slandered in the in the press a lot so we now don't see that development as much as which it is just an amo am, yeah amazing arena but again i feel like i need to do that with ai like just take all those the taboo away from it of being being this bad thing and just saying to people just forget about that because it's hindering you from actually getting on and accepting are there, there i mean there are things that you know that, that you'll probably know more about it than me but the where people are saying how how the the legalities of people's art has been used and all of that kind of stuff so i i understand that but i'm of this i guess i'm one of those renegades that said who can well i mean this is me as an artist who cares if someone takes some of my art and it's used in their development of their, their you know, it's like, uh, to me, it's like we're a studio of artists when you, you know, when you kind of, when they were the old masters and they used to get together and they would share, yeah. they would work on each other's work and they would share that. They, so they came up with like the, the new, the new artists, like, like the impressionists and things like that. They, they formed a new style of painting by sharing and, and working and looking at each other's work and saying, I'll take a bit of what you're doing and I'll add it to what I'm doing and they'll take a bit. And that's how, that's how, you know, styles evolved and cubism and all of that kind of stuff. So I kind of see AI in the same way. It's funny, as soon as he started talking about it, my brain went, well, that's cute. You know, that's how they started cubism or that's how they started, you know, I agree. I, I mean, yeah, I, I understand exactly where you're coming from on that because, for example, um, and you and you know, living up in Cambridge, you know, um, uh, John that I work with uh, is a yeah. is a uh, uses co collage, and like he's yeah, using yeah. papers and magazines and bits of of other things. Like it makes you question, like, well, why is that any different? You know, a they're not literally just taking a carbon copy of something and stick that that's copyright. That's a different conversation. Yeah, yeah. but one that you've brought up though. Is very different than being inspired by. Is that what yeah. you're kind of saying? Yeah, yeah. I guess, I guess, I guess inspired by. I mean, I guess I haven't. By. And I haven't used it enough in the way that, and I haven't seen it enough. You know, enough to to, to say that there are some artists whose styles are so distinct that then when they see a piece of AI art that's been modelled on theirs because someone's put in the prompt, I'll oh, make it in the style of, you know, if, if, if we were just like going back to kind of cubism because it's a kind of easy art genre to kind of like instantly think to and go, yeah. oh, that's, yeah, that's that style. But so at the moment there are some new artists that are working in a certain way that people are putting prompts in and then producing work that's, you know, in their style. But is that you know is that style ownable by them mm -hmm. or was it going to be an evolved style that would have been, you know come out so it's a really fine line hard thing to say i think this direct copy of something like you say carbon copy to carbon copy that's 
that's that's you know i just i don't know if i I haven't experienced enough or i haven't um you know researched or seen or heard enough, many stories about what what that really looks like yeah. um other than in advertising i know that they were kind of there's um the, the, where clients are kind of worried that there wasn't a source from an original image or something you know so you would you wouldn't want kind of something to go out and spend millions of dollars on a big billboard and then have you know a lawsuit against you to kind of say oh that's an image that a photographer took and that's you know yeah. that's the lemon that was from the tree and there might be two dots of that lemon that they could tell it was their lemon you know so that's the bit that I think is the un it, it, I don't think it's it, it's not been used enough or explored enough or talked about enough to know what that is I don't know if you, what your thoughts on that are too if, um, um I think it's a, I think it's an interesting one I think like all of the other things like when like you said when we went from painting to photography and then photography moved into digital photography or you see the incoming of the internet these the patterns have occurred haven't they when these new things have been introduced through history and I yeah. think I think it will just it will for want of a better word I think it will just pan out I think it yeah, will just yeah, yeah 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 there may be a few uh first time cases or or legal issues and things I think which will either set precedence or will blow it out of the water I'm not sure which way I will go yeah, my, instinct, yeah, yeah. my instinct tells me it'll blow it out of the water but yeah. <clears throat> that's a arty farty creative person in me that goes I think that'll yeah. just take itself out which brings me to a really interesting question around so we looked at the sort of like what's happening now and in the next couple of years but if you were to jump forward for like five ten years time both in the world of art but also in the world of graphic design and and that sort of creative director side the commercial side um yeah. where do you see uh that going like what does that window look like in five to ten years time do yeah. you, you think just a guess yeah <laughs> it <is> just... <laughs> um it's it's kind of like uh, if 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 i kind of well, it's hard, as if i form a an idea in my mind straight away would be um it, I'm already that like I'm already in that future and the world hasn't caught up to it yet so I'm still waiting so you're ahead of the curve <laughs> what's that you're ahead of the curve I'm I, like my brain's so ahead of it that I'm just so sick of the like going out and seeing the world where it is now creatively and and so I'm just wait you know just waiting to to be allowed fit for creativity to be allowed to just let loose on the world and yeah. I, I don't think it has yet um mm, so you know if you, if you think of like walking down a high street and walking down a supermarket and everything's so held in check it's not you know then you walk into like uh, the galleries of of the center of london like a cork street you know gallery dealer gallery and there's some really thought-provoking you know avant-garde art that that just pushes the limits of your brain well you're not seeing that in the supermarket are you no true. you know you're not seeing you're not seeing these beautiful kind of art and creativity so and and you can search on like creative um you know like portfolio sites like Behance is one that is you know I, I just love it you're not seeing all that when you're walking up the high street so the world just hasn't caught up yet so in five years' time, hopefully they'll catch up to where really high end art is now. In five years' time, <laughs> but hopefully with AI, we'll get there a lot quicker. You know, it'll it'll evolve everything. I, you know, and I'm talking about like like say like um just something like a I don't know an an advert for a for for a garage. You know, to get your tires done or whatever, and how boring that is, and and. And all that signage that we're kind of seeing along our, you know, in our in our lives that impacts what we see creatively, or or we, you know, we see the, within the yeah the sublime of a city what you're kind of what you're showing is no nowhere near the creativity that's out there if you really search for the deep kind of you know um, creative areas on an inter, on the internet or in in the design worlds or. You know, the, the amount of projects that I that I pitched for and 
the creativity that went on, like with big teams of amazing creative minds that just never saw the light of day. Mm. And it's just yeah. so, you know, so sad <laughs> of yeah. how we're, you know, I've seen how, how squashed we are and I've seen how, I've seen how like adverts on TV and people go, oh, who wrote that? And you go, well, it's because, because we were forced into this dullness. <laughs> so um, I'm, I'm excited that maybe AI will, push boundaries on that and push our creativity further faster yeah I think that's cool I think that brings me to a really interesting point around um because I think what drives that behavior particularly in clients in the commercial world anyway is fear and what that yeah. brings me to is a really interesting question that I want to know from everybody is what do you what do you think artists are most afraid of when it comes to AI do you think they are afraid? From from what I'm hearing, I think it's that it's the um, ownership stuff, you know, that, that fear of like. But whether that's a UK thing, so I haven't really seen enough. I'm from New Zealand, you know, being from New Zealand, it's my accent kind of thing. But you know, we all know that by now. Let's yep. for this conversation. But um, m- maybe it's that thing in the UK. I've even heard it that. And it wasn't just me saying this, but but like old master artists I work with, I collaborate with an with an old artist. I call him old; he's only he's ten years older than me. But um, he his view on 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 artists in the UK is that the the less collaborative. He's had a career growing, um, expanding in Amer- in America, and he said that here they're very prima donna, they're very closed doors, they're very ownership stuff, um, and. And there's this high, you know, like almost hierarchy, or there's not the sharing of of ideas. And so I wonder if in different communities around the world, that then that that ability to to kind of embrace AI a bit more and and use it as a, a more collaborative partner and and be less fearful will will mean that they'll move faster with it and embrace it faster, and so that so there'll be more advancements. That's interesting. So you think maybe the uptake of AI fear or not fear is potentially being impacted by culture. Yeah. Country culture. That's interesting. Yeah. I haven't thought about that as a yeah. impact. Because that will be yeah. impacting how quickly people take it up, if they take it up, how they take it up. Culture. Yeah. It, does, it does make and sense. And the media, and, and media, I mean media, you know, like I actually think, because I think, my thoughts on say AI, um, GBT, you know, GBT chat as a tool. Um, I think humans are, we're all AI anyway. Like everything that I've said now today is input into my brain from stuff that I've read or conversations I've had. So what's the difference to an AI writing machine that, you know, they're, they're just that yep. on speed, you know, they yeah. So there's no, and I do. That's where I have to check. I have my artistic um, training, which coming back to that Elam Fine Art School, where they would stretch the limits of your brain because they would take you out to a thought process that might be mainstream media rhetoric that you just, you know, that's why I just don't listen to the radio here in the UK because it's just so mainstream that you just have one train of thought. Actually, I have to say, living in Cambridge. There's a Cambridge radio station. Everyone should listen to it because it's the only radio station that gives you loads of different programming. So there's not like within within one style of music, you get you get kind of ten genres within the within you know um, one one kind of session of mute of of stuff. And I haven't heard radio stations like that. So so I think the fear mongering of media is going to have an impact as well. Um, yeah. On on what artists, you know, and I guess the UK culture is notoriously negative on anything. So controversial, but <laughs> that's a big statement. To that go. is a big statement. <laughs> <laughs> it is a very big statement. But it, it is interesting about culture. And you and I both haven't come from New Zealand, which is um there's a saying in New Zealand which is uh the number eight wire mentality. And what that means is yeah, uh, and it is why we're often seen as one of the most entrepreneurial in the world. Although I think that's getting less now, um, because everybody's catching up. But 
the number eight wire mentality is like your you, number eight wire is a tensile wire, and it basically you use it to fix anything to do like yeah. if you've, got, if you've broken on your car, you're autistic. And I think that's that yeah. New Zealanders do come with that sort of push the boundary thing. We have to because we're so far away. Yeah. When we yeah. when I came to the UK, and I think you and I have talked about this before, um, the adjustment of culture shock which we were not expecting yeah is interesting isn't it so yeah. well i mean that's that, that's that that like the 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 it's the pioneering spirit that we have in us that you had to make do and amend and you you, you didn't get pigeonholed because everyone did everything you, you literally had you know i mean yes you had roles within within um companies and i worked in agencies where there was that kind of traditional roles of of within the studio but you know I was an art director in New Zealand that that I you know I helped there was there was this kind of like blurring of the edges to you know when you when you worked with a copywriter you became a copywriter as well it wasn't just no you don't write the copy because you're the art director you know you just stay with the pictures it was more there was more collaborative mixing kind of thing mm. so um and that was on every level it will be life. interesting to see then as a future forward thing, I think it'll be quite interesting to see, and I don't know if you agree with this, like country by country, who's going to take it up more and what they do with it as they move forward with it. Because obviously there's going to be global laws and there's going to be UK laws yeah. and in America yeah. there's going to be federal as well as um, yeah. as well as well uh, international and, and, and state laws and that yeah. kind of thing. But it's going to be interesting how that all works out yeah. and, and and yeah culture culture and um another big thing is spirituality is going to have an impact i i went to a really interesting talk here i mean cambridge is amazing for the the um churches and the talks that they have at the churches that they're just so in depth at the, at the theology but i did go to a talk which was ai and spirituality oh wow so that was a really yeah that was a really interesting one it was mainly Actually, they mainly discussed a lot of it was when NFTs were. It was, so it was, I think it was a year and a half ago, two years ago. So there wasn't really AI hadn't really released like it has now into the mainstream media with Chat GPT and stuff. Um, so it was more talking about um, AI art and and NF, NF, the NFT culture and and stuff within that. But it was a really interesting talk on the impact of of what that influence has of of yeah man and machine and and yeah. spirituality over that um i think the, where does it um, do you think the impact on behavior if you look at the world now and the impact the internet's had on behavior in general do you think ai is going to have a similar impact on human behavior um, i think I, th I think the impact oh for me the impacts um kind of so yes like I don't know, socialism or social society kind of stuff. Mm. Um, will AI? I think it it might have an impact because it 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 will definitely make us all more intelligent because it might take away your intelligence. You know, people say, "Oh, because it makes things so easy, so you don't have to do the writing, you don't have to read this, you don't have to do that." But actually, it it then speeds up your your reading, your brain, your capabilities of like finding out information. So, so instead of having to research something and trawl through ten different, you know, stories or books on an internet search, you get to that thing straight away that you're searching for with, you know, with one prompt. Um, so, to me, I I believe it'll kind of make us more highly evolved, and and creativity. So, creativity is a way of thinking as opposed to. Where everyone thinks creativity is, can I draw an apple? Well, I don't. I don't believe that's creativity. <laughs> um, but so I think on that level, it is going to speed us up because we will become more creative. Yeah, that's interesting, isn't it? Because that's actually the opposite of what a lot of people are thinking. So, yeah. Um, do you think then that if you're going to be becoming more involved, that that's going to give you, as an artist and as a commercial creative director? Um, more of a competitive advantage. Do you think AI will do that for you? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I mean, you, you, you see it. You see it already. Like you see, um, I've I've just seen some ads 
uh, in the last couple of days, actually, just saying you could create an AI agency with no experience of, of being like of having an agency or even being a creative. Like it's, it's yeah. kind of like what? <laughs> What 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 do I have as to that? But but you know it's the same thing when the computer came along and it, and then all of a sudden everyone could be a designer, and that's when as as a creative who became a designer it was like yeah watch how that's going to happen you know and again we see what the reality is it's all mainstream yeah. you know boring designs and and stuff that gets you know so there will still be that creative thinkers will have an edge. You know, and and that's the that's the sad thing that's not being taught and has been taken out of the school curriculum here is is creativity, because there's this I I mean and it is it's not just me having a a kind of mum's ta- you know school gate tale of where's creativity going in the education but I, you know I had quite there's you know sources that do talk about it that um it's a short sighted thing to to have to kind of when you get to a certain I don't really know this is the school system here but there is a, a certain thing that um to do a science degree you kind of have to cut you have to cut out um the arts things to be able to do all your science or something but in New Zealand the universities are promoting themselves Auckland University came over here um a few years back and their promotion was a creative university they were kind of putting themselves out to the world as a creative university and they were adding um you had to to pass a science paper. You have to do an arts paper. Oh, so it? so they yeah. yeah, and they were trying to merge the two faculties. So I think they were quite separated geographically within Auckland, and they were mixing things up a bit. They were kind of there was you know planning for that, and so so there was real. What's that? That's clever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was really, it was really, you know, I love, I love the advancement of that, of the understanding of that. That um, you know, creativity is a way of thinking rather than a art is nice to have um, mm. kind of perception. I think that's really quite forward thinking of them, like, you know, that intersection of where art creativity meets uh, technology and sciences and it's almost like left brain meets right brain. Like you and I know, know that when, for example, when there's creativity going on on any campaigns or marketing materials or brand creativity and art as well but when you have that moment where art science and tech comes together there is usually something pretty powerful created for the education systems to be starting to look at that because I've heard that in the UK don't quote me on this because I don't have any stats off the top of my head but I've heard things from other people that um, they are pulling uh, art and creativity out of the education system I yeah. mean so Ken Robinson yeah. would well, I did I did but, ask the dean of Elam when it went at this kind of event and he had thoughts on it so he he'd heard he you know there was not so that I mean that's coming from me quoting what I heard at a at a social event of of the Auckland University coming over here that was years ago it was um there's a, I think there's a new dean now a different dean but um it was an interesting one because I was also working at Bear Trade at the time and I was sitting in someone's desk as a freelancer and I was talking to them about it. I said, oh, I've heard this. And and they said, yes, um, the guy that's you're sitting in his seat, he's a campaigner. They have campaigners um, that work in the in fair trade. And he'd actually lobbied to bring it to Parliament. So they'd actually, had, they'd rate, they'd actually got enough to have a discussion in Parliament about why, why art wasn't important in your later years because to, to be able to fit it in with the subjects you had to take or something mm. so then it wasn't being seen as important in the earlier years there's that whole thing about stem and steam like to add the a back in art back into education system and there's a whole whole kind of a um, lot of people lobbying for that and there are schools that are turning into steam schools instead of stem schools so oh, um, yeah i think so there was, what, i there think was, what sorry I yeah, think there's, a, there's a guy. I don't know. I can't remember his name, but he's campaigning for for it and doing a lot of amazing kind of um, symposiums and things. I went along to a couple of them. But, yeah. I think what's really interesting about that whole situation is, and I've talked to people about this before. It's um, the difference between people thinking that creative means that you have to know how, or, or, artistic, or artistic means that you need to know how to draw. 
or yeah, create the, yeah, to or draw an apple or like that. But yeah. actually, there's a whole Back different the, area which is creative thinking. You know, um, there's more to being a creative than just being able to pick up a, a pen and a yeah. pencil or a whatever, isn't there? Yeah. Well, I, well, I try and I try and undraw my drawing skills. I think designs as a as a um, practice has made me too say good at drawing, um, where where I become too technical and I lose the ability to be creatively draw in a free flowing way where I prefer to I, I did a um, illustration online drawing um, session once it was really good because the, the artist who took it she, she got us to try and draw in her style and her style was doing tiny little heads and big arms and legs and and <laughs> and, and hands and I I and so it was interesting that my style my style because of my um graphic background just ends up I just have a Matisse like style to my artwork because I've got that graphic background um but it was really interesting how what I produced and then what added to my work from not copying hers it looked very different to her style when she was trying to get us to all copy her style um as the as part of the practice um it did enrich my drawing from then on I kind of I, 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 I was able to loosen up and not try and draw these perfectly hands that were the right shape and size and proportion to the body and things like that so that's where my artwork changed from that one session it was really oh. you know really really good um so that's where you know ai is going to come in and it's going to give me something different that i might not have thought about as i'm doing my processing so i do see it as like a collaborator um in that same way it's really and, interesting and then, um the we keep coming back to the the collaboration, uh, art being a collaborator and a, a nudger of, or a, a, I don't want to say pusher of ideas, but that sort of driver of new thinking and what have you, which is very different. It's almost the opposite of what a lot of people that are fearful of it think. It's like yeah. opening up rather than closing down, which is, for me, quite exciting. I think the fact that it's going to be pushing yeah. Pushing things. Yeah, definitely. So do you think that there's a, based on that then, do you think there's a perfect creative spot between humans and AI when it comes to art specifically? So not, um, not, the, not the commercial side, but art, uh, fine yeah. art in particular. Yeah, fine art. Um, do you think there's a creative sweet spot between the humans and the, and the AI? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think... Say so computers already had that. You'd had that discussion. Is is there a sweet spot between using a computer and as an artist using oils mm. and only traditional materials? Um, that discussion kind of was like, how does that? How does how does tech inform the art or change the art or? And I, I always believe that if I had the most simplest of computers um, and it only had one kind of function, then I should still be able to produce amazing art. Mm. It shouldn't be amazing because the tech was available to do some blending or some extra kind of um, fading filter that I could put on a piece of something. Yeah. Um, it, it would be shit if, if I was... <laughs> wasn't creative enough you know yeah, that blur yeah, just yeah th there's a there's you know there's a sensitivity that you have to kind of work through oh does that blur look okay no it doesn't next to this or that or however you were using it um and and so I still think that uh, yeah AI is definitely got amazing intelligence like what, like doing the avatars is what showed me I was just blown away so um so it is just going to get it is going to get better and better and better, um, mm. but I do think it's not going to take over. Being able to curate as a yeah. as a as a um, creative or someone who's maybe got more of a you know brain to them that's more advanced in their creative thinking, yep. than someone who's been closed off in their creative thinking and who's been kind of squared down by 
keeping to a tech side of the, mm. the technology. Yeah. Yeah. Well, look, this has been a really fascinating conversation. I've really enjoyed um, our chat today. I've just got a couple more things that I want to to, to chat to you about. Um, uh, I think the the whole conversation today, especially it's my first one. Thank you for being here for me today on that yeah. and so, sort of walking me through my first interview, for want of a better word, podcast. Um, a couple of things I wanted to ask you about was uh, – where people can find you. So one of the places they can physically find Anna, we didn't even talk about this today, is that you no. did all of the, um, quite a lot of work with the Battersea Power Station and the creative with that. But all no. of your artwork is sitting on all of the plinths that sit around on the, is it brass work? Yeah, the history, yeah, the history yep. trail. So they can physically yeah, so find your the art on there. Infrastructure. So they, they're not, they were, um, not just a billboard or a commercial piece. They were yep. part of the um, cultural heritage site of the build of the of the generate you know regeneration. So I did work on a lot of their marketing um, collateral and a lot of the adverts that went out for the apartments and things like that. Um, but this was yeah a really nice job to be part of. And so when you go in there, there's there's twelve around the outside um, plinths with this history story. And there's, I think there's 12 scattered on the inside of the power station. They'll be permanently there. They're, they're etched in metal. So, um, a hell of a legacy. Um, yeah. 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 <laughs> that's amazing. So that's where we can physically find you quickly within London, yep. even though you're living in Cambridge. Where can people yep. find you online? The quickest and easiest way is um, Linktree, I think, because that's got all of my links instead of me trying to list off everything to you now. Yep. Um, but it's Linktree and it's Anna the artist. Um, so and I mean, a, like as, somewhere. yeah, oh. and then and then as another as another one, the the my my Instagram. If people kind of want to go and see that, um, some recent stuffs there is Kurt Lewis Studios. So that's um, K U R T L O U I S and Studios. Um, and those are my two grandfather's names. Yep. So if people are wondering where that where that name came from, it's a legacy of artists in my family. Um and and that's where I kind of showcase my daily life and the things that I do here in Cambridge and river swimming and um the inspiration and co- and the collaborations that I'm doing. There will be more coming up there that'll start putting the collaboration work with other artists. We'll make sure we put all the links in the appropriate places for you for that uh, when through yep. the editing process. Um, and my last question, we, we're uh, going to ask this of everybody moving forward, is uh, if you were to have a, a, a future podcast guest that you would like to hear on Creative mm-hmm. AI, who would that be and why? Uh, I would say it would have to be my my contemporaries so the people that I work with um that I've I, I hold like really high admiration for um two two artists that are in my life at the moment or th- can I say three you <laughs> can say three that's fine <laughs> say three four five <laughs> but, yeah um I would say um that there's an artist in New Zealand Holly Clark um, it, she'll be amazing too. She was a fashion designer in Italy for a while. Um, we both went to school together, and she then went on to switch um, pivot into design career, and um, and is now pivoted back into fine art again. So she, yeah, she'd be amazing. And um, Michelle, a creative um, Michelle Ward, she's in Australia, and she she went she was working with her art out in the Maldives she does beautiful paintings of um of turtles and sea stuff and things like that so she had a residency at a in a resort there and and she's really high tech like out of everyone I know it, she's she's her her work's very kind of um you know old uh, traditional style of painting and watercolor but the tech side of her brain of where you know she, she picks up she's probably re- the most advanced person I know um, and then here locally in Cambridge, I would say you've just got to interview um, Nick Jewett. Yeah. Um, he does sound like a BBC radio host. So he's, you've got a, a, a kind of art brain with his intelligence is just, so, yeah, something. So, yeah, he, he would be really interesting to interview. 
Well, that's wonderful. And I do some collaboration with him. So we're doing some spotlights, we call them. So I'm really excited about that project. Perfect. Well, look, thank you for being my first uh, guest. Obviously not the first on Creators with AI, but definitely my no. first <laughs> guest. Really appreciate that. And um, who knows, might talk to you again at some time further down the track, but I've really appreciated it. And um, yeah. I'd like to thank you for, for coming on. It's been amazing. Oh, thank you. Yeah, and thank you, Lena, for kind of like prompting a lot of the conversation because it's, yeah, it's a bit nerving for me too. And it's <laughs> been a really nice um, podcast, one of my, yeah, one of my first podcasts as well. So Excellent. Well, thank, thank you, you very much for, for that. Thank you for coming on. Thank you for listening, everybody. And uh, we look forward to seeing you on the next one. So see you there and yep. stay curious. <laughs> Creatives with AI is a proud member of the AI Podcast Network. To stay up to date with current episodes and show information, subscribe to their newsletter at podcastnetwork.ai. And don't forget to follow the show on your favorite podcast platform so you'll always get the episodes as soon as they're available. Thanks again for listening and stay curious. curious.